Hi, hello, வணக்கம் and welcome back to yet another interesting videos by my favorite Little Slav YouTube channel. So today in this video, we are going to see about one of the interesting topic which most of us would have come across. Uh, you are like working in a performance testing project and some of your team, like some other team, uh, might have a requirement on ETL testing and they might ask you, are you okay to take this? Like, are you okay to pick up uh, doing the ETL testing? And you might be confused whether it is, is it a functional testing or is that a performance related? I mean, like whether it's functional or a non-functional or what kind of testing is it, right? So most of us would have got confused and some of the times, most of the times we might have rejected it or sometimes we might not know what exactly we are going to do. So we will, we're not in a situation to pick it up. So, but don't worry, you are a member or you're a subscriber, you're a family of Little Slaw YouTube channel. So I'll take you through uh, what is ETL testing and what are all the tools you're going to use for ETL testing. And I will walk you through one of the tool. Uh, maybe we can uh, pick up any one of the uh, open source tool uh, for doing this ETL testing. And I will let you know how to do in each and every stage of ETL testing. So for now, uh, this is going to be an introduction video on ETL testing. So what is ETL testing? And before we move on to this uh, video, this is me, Yosan Shanmugam. As I'm going to ask you to subscribe to my channel if you haven't subscribed it yet. And uh, give a thumbs up if you haven't, uh, if you like this video and share the video with your friends. And yep, let's come back to the uh, concept. So what is ETL testing? So ETL stands for, E stands for extract, T for transform and L for load. So we're going to do extract, transform and load testing to ensure that the data is accurately extracted from a source system and they are transformed according to defined business rules and then they are loaded into the target system as expected. So we are doing three different actions in one particular testing that is extracting the data from the source system. It can be any system. Uh, I'll take you through that examples. It can be any source system and we have to transform it according to defined business rules. And then we have to load it into target system as expected. So the goal of this ETL testing is to verify that the ETL process work as intended by comparing the input, which we take it from the source data with the output that is in, uh, in the uh, target location, so where we load the data. So we have to confirm that our source data along with the uh, transformed and the loaded data. So that's what we're going to do with the ETL testing. And let me take uh, give you uh, one small example. Like imagine you're working for a retail company uh, and they collect sales data from multiple stores. Like for example, uh, take it like uh, if you are in um, UK, you might know about Tesco stores. Or else if you are in US, you might know what Walmart store or Aldi or Lidl or whatever. Just take it. So uh, a retail company and they have uh, they have to collect the sales data from different multiple stores. So they have databases in different locations, which is their source systems. And they need to consolidate this data into a centralized data warehouse. That is the target system for reporting and analysis. So that's where the ETL testing comes into picture. And the first step of it is, the extract so ETL extracts the sales data from different stores databases that's the first part you're going to extract the data data from the different store databases the second part is transformation so the data is cleaned and standardized for example the sales records may be in different data or date formats and this process ensures all records use the same format so you have to extract you have to transform it you have to transform it all to a standardized format that is the second step and then in the third step, you have to load the data. So you have the transform data, which you did in the second step, has to be loaded into the company's central data warehouse for further analysis. So overall, in ETL testing, you can, you would or you have to verify that the extracted data is correct. That is the first step while you are doing your extraction. That is no missing or incorrect sales records should be there. The second part, as part of your transformation, you have to ensure that the transformation, like the date conversion, conversions are accurate. And the third part, the last part, which is as part of your loading, you have to confirm that all the transformed data is properly loaded into the central warehouse. So now you can very well understand what exactly are you going to do as part of your ETL testing. So now you might 
uh, have a confusion or you might have a query like what is what could be the difference between the ETL and the application testing so ETL testing is mainly used in data intensive projects especially those that involve large amounts of data and, and nowadays like everybody would say that data is money so uh, everything is in is data now and it's not only about retail applications it's everything like the social media applications banking applications uh, any other engineering industry so everywhere you collect data right so this is different from application testing which often deals with smaller transactional data used by business applications for example in application testing you might test a shopping cart right as part of a performance testing we do test a shopping cart transaction to ensure that the product gets added correctly but in ETL testing, you would verify that all the sales data from the shopping cart is extracted, transformed, and loaded correctly into the reporting system for business analysis. So next time when you are in your ETL interview, ETL testing interview, you know what to answer, right? So let's move to the next step. And the next step is going to be why ETL testing is required, right? So that we should understand, right? Why ETL testing is required. So now we will see why ETL testing is important. So previously we saw what is ETL testing and how is it happening with an example. So now we'll see why ETL testing is important. So whenever an application is developed, it needs to be tested to ensure it works as expected. And the same applies to the ETL process as well which is uh, a piece of software that's created by developers. And since the ETL process is central to any data-driven project or system, errors in this process can lead to incorrect data and which can negatively impact the downstream applications that rely on that data. So that's the reason we have to do this ETL testing. So uh, let me tell you, uh, let me give you one of the example of, uh, to understand uh, how, ex uh, how important the ETL testing is. Uh, take for example, uh, you are in a healthcare industry where you gather every patient's data from different hospitals and you use an ETL process to consolidate into a central database. And if the ETL process incorrectly handles the patient information such as mismatching the patient records or incorrectly transforming the medical medical data, that you you want you would understand like how how it could lead to significant issues like incorrect diagnosis or billing errors right so it could even uh, risk a human's life right so that will tell you how important the etl testing is and without etl testing there is no way to be sure that the etl process was built according to the project's requirements or that it functions correctly and in fact etl testing ensures that the ETL code is correct before it is deployed to production and any data discrepancies are identified early whether they come from the source data such as in this example such as the hospital systems or from errors in the ETL transformation so that importance is the ETL testing so what exactly you are doing is you are actually preventing costly issues in production so when you are fixing the data problems after the ETL process has been deployed into production uh, which is often complex and expensive so in the healthcare example even in this example if incorrect patient records are loaded into the system by fixing those records later could involve substantial effort uh, legal implications and even financial costs and even i would say you're saving someone's life <laughs> so ETL testing catches all these issues during development phase and that prevents them from reaching production and ensuring the system operates smoothly and now the next part of ETL testing is you are going to see the ETL testing basics. So now we'll see the ETL testing basics. So just like the application code, uh, or uh, let me uh, tell you the, uh, the very basics of ETL testing. So the ETL process involves, uh, as we all know, three different steps, the extraction, which happens the first step, and then it, uh, the next part is the transformation. And then finally it loads into it loads into the data warehouse the central data warehouse so it reads data from a source system applies transformation like cleaning or formatting and then loads the data into a target system which is typically a data warehouse and in large organizations there could be thousands of such etl processes which are running all the time to handle the data related to finances customers and operations so 
Let me give you another example. So in this example, I'm going to take you uh, to a retail company which uses a retail, uh, ETL process to manage customer transactions across hundreds of stores. And each day, the sales data is extracted from store systems and transformed into a standardized format like converting the currencies to US dollars and then loaded into a central database for reporting and analysis. So again, we all know why ETL testing is important, but there are some unique challenges of ETL testing. And the first thing is, ETL testing do not have any user interface. So when I say it does not have any user interface, unlike any regular application testing where you click on the buttons or you navigate to the screens, ETL processes runs in the background with no user interface. For example, you won't see the transformed data until it is loaded into the database, which is making it harder to detect the problems visually. So now you understand how difficult it is to work on the ETL data, uh, even without even seeing what exactly is happening. And then, the amount of data, they are large and large, I would say. So ETL processors handle huge and huge data sets. For instance, the retail company's ETL process may deal with millions and millions of sales transactions daily, right? And testing all this data accurately is crucial to ensure that there are no error slips through the transactions. So now you understood how challenging it is. And then the input and output data comparison. So ETL processors are like mathematical functions. You feed them input, you feed them the input, which is the raw sales data from the stores, or it can be the medical data of the patients. So they transform it, uh, which is in terms of the retail, they do the currency conversion or standardizing the dates. And then you verify that the output, that is the data loaded into the central database and it matches the expected results. For example, if the ETL process changes sales from euro or from pounds or from uh, Indian rupees or from any other uh, currency to USD. The tester will compare the original input value in the source uh, currency conversion with the transformed value in US dollars to make sure it is correct. So just imagine how complex it is, but still that it should be done, right? So you can't risk the business. And then the defects are not easily visible in code, which is unlike any traditional software, uh, which is like the application or like any, any, any traditional software where issues can often be spotted by reviewing the code. But ETL testing requires actually executing the process and validating the results. For example, an error in the currency conversion logic may not be obvious in the code, but would show up when you compare the output to the expected results after running the ETL job. And now we'll move on to the next step, and that is more interesting, and that's the main part, which is how to do the ETL testing. So how are we going to do the ETL testing? So now we'll see how to do the ETL testing. So ETL testing is typically done using a black box testing approach. This means that instead of testing the code itself, ETL process is executed to produce output data and the quality of the ETL process is determined by comparing the output with the expected results. And I'll take you through an example. So imagine a bank is using an FTL process to load their daily transactions into its data warehouse for reporting. And these transactions include deposits, withdrawals, and transfers from multiple branches. So the first step, um, as part of the ETL testing is you have to execute the ETL process. So the first thing is the ETL code has to be run or we have to run the ETL code uh, to extract the transaction data from the bank's branch systems and we have to transform it. For example, converting the transaction times to a standard format and we have to load it into the central data warehouse. For example, the ETL process extracts a deposit of $1,000, 1,000 US dollars, which is made at branch A on 15th of January, 2024 at 3.45 p.m. and converts the time to a standardized UTC format. So now the second step is we have to compare the output data with the expected results. After the ETL job is complete, the output in the data warehouse is compared with the expected data to verify the correctness. For example, in this step, you are going to compare the transformed data in the, in the data warehouse. That is the first of uh, 15th of January 2024, and the time has to be instead of 3:45 p.m. It has to be 15:45 UTC against the expected format, and the values has to. I mean, you have to ensure the values uh, based on the transformation that it is accurate. 
and then you have to uh, the next step which is we have to determine the quality of the etl process so based on the comparison between the output data and the expected data so you you are you have like two data right one is the source data and then one you have yeah, this transform data so the tester has to determine whether the etl process is functioning correctly for example if uh, the $1,000 deposit at branch A is correctly reflected in the data warehouse with a proper timestamp, with a proper amount, the ETL process has passed. If not, then it is automatically failed. So if there are discrepancies like wrong transaction amounts or missing records or any discrepancy in the uh, time in any changes in the standardized format, then the ETL process needs to be fixed. So this is how we do the ETL testing. So it starts with running the ETL code, collecting the data, comparing the data, and then finally we match the, yes, we match the uh, output data and the expected data. And now we'll move on to the next step, and that's uh, where we're going to, I'm going to take you uh, the difference between the manual testing and the ETL testing, because whatever we do now, Almost it is same as manual testing, right? Running the ETL code and doing the collection of data and doing the comparison. But there is a difference between the manual testing and the ETL testing, and I will tell you now. And now as the last part of this video, I'm going to discuss about the difference between the manual testing and the ETL testing because there are like lots of other concepts like in terms of the ETL testing concepts and there are like type of ETL testings and uh, several ETL testing scenarios and what are the scope of ETL testing. So we'll see all of them in our next video. So in this one, I, like, I end with what is the difference between the manual and manual and the ETL testing. So starting with the manual testing. So when, when I say manual testing, so that involves testing an application's functionality uh, its usability and the overall behavior uh, by manually clicking or by manually interacting with the user interface of the system. So the tester executes the test cases without using automation tools, typically focusing on verifying the UI or the functional flows and the user interactions. So the manual testing can be applied to software applications, uh, the websites or any system with a front end inter interface. On the other hand, when I talk about the ETL testing, the extract, transform, and load testing focuses on validating the data flow in a data-centric process. So the main focus here is the data. So everywhere, when, I, when we talk about ETL, it is all about the data. So it verifies the data is correctly extracted from a source system, accurately transformed as per business rules, and successfully loaded into the target system. And ETL testing typically deals with large volumes of data and ensures data integrity, accuracy, and consistency. So unlike manual testing, uh, the ETL testing involves testing backend processes without a user interface, right? So with that, I come to an end of this video. Uh, thanks for watching the entire video and we'll see the next, the other more interesting topics in our upcoming video and also we'll see how to do this uh, using tools. So with that, I, with that, I'm going to end this video. So until I meet you in our next video, it's bye-bye from Vasan Shanmugam and your favorite Little Slaw YouTube channel. Take care and bye-bye.